Hey guys. Welcome to another tutorial video. In this tutorial, we will add the game over function to this game. We will also add the game over animation of the player. Like when the game will be over, the player will die. So, we have to add the death animation. I am going to select the player game object and then open the animation window. Now, we will create a new clip from here. Make sure it is inside the anim folder. We can name it player death. Now, we will open the player sprites folder. Then we will select all the dead images and drag and drop them onto the animation window. Now, we have to change the sample to 24. The animation will be like this. After creating the death animation clip, we need the animator window as we need to set up the animation. So, we will create a trigger type parameter called death. Previously we have created a parameter for the player jump animation which was also trigger type parameter. However, now we will make a transition between run and death. Now, we will double click the death animation box and disable the loop time, as we don't need this animation to loop. Because, death shouldn't loop. So, now we will get to the code. First, we have to open the player controller script. We will create the game over system inside this script. So, we will first create a public bool variable called is game over. By default, it should be false. Now, we will make a function called game over. Inside this function, first we will make the is game over true. Then we will call the death animation of the player, because the death animation should be played when the game is over. So, I am going to write anim.setRigger and the, the parameter name which is death. Now, we will use the is game over variable to control the full game. First, we will give a condition to the player run code. The condition will be if the is game over is false. Here you can see a exclamation mark, because, exclamation mark means false. So, if the variable is false, then the player will run. Otherwise, the player will not run. This condition is inside the update function, so it will be checked in every frame. Now, we will use the same condition for jump. Here, we can see some conditions are already there. So, we will write the and sign two times like this, and then add the condition, so it will check if the game is over before making a jump. Now, we will use this condition for the obstacle spawning system. I am going to open the obstacle spawner script and then. We will add the condition inside the update function. So, we have to first access the is game over variable from the player controller script. So, how we can do that? First we have to find the game object which the player controller script is attached. We know the player controller script is attached to the player game object. So, I am going to find the player game object by the tag name. And then we have to get a component called player controller which is the script we need. So, now we will be able to get the variable. 
then we will stop the spawn obstacles enumerator function, so the obstacles will stop spawning. We just have to write stop coroutine and the function name inside double quotes. So, ultimately this condition means, if the is game over variable is true, I mean if the game is over, then the obstacle will stop spawning. Save the script by Ctrl S and open the player controller script. Remember we have not called the game over function yet. So, we will call it now. In this game, the game over will happen in two case, first, if the player collides with an obstacle. Second, if the player falls down from the ground. In case of falling down, if the player falls onto the bottom destroyer game object, then we will make the game over. So, we will have to detect collision in both cases. We would be able to detect collision with obstacles very easily. Because, obstacles are under the obstacle tag. But, the bottom destroyer has no tag. So, we will add a tag called bottom detector. Now, we will set the tag for the bottom destroyer game object. So, first we will detect the collision between player and obstacles. We can do this inside the player controller script. So I am going to detect the collision inside the onCollision enter 2D function. We already know how to detect a collision. So, if the player collides with an object that is under the obstacle tag, then we want the game over function to be called. Now, we will detect the collision with bottom destroyer. So, in the same way we will do the collision detection, just change the tag name to bottom detector. So, now we will save the script by pressing Ctrl S. Then we can go back to the Unity. Now, press the play button to check if everything is fine. Okay we can see the game is not working fine. The error is down below as you can see. If we click here, we can see a new window called console. We will place it in the scene view window. This window usually shows error and warning. However, the error is obstacles. If I open the visual studio, we can see obstacles. I am going to cut the S from the end, as our tag name is only obstacle. So. Now we can save the script and go back to Unity. Now, we can see errors have gone as I made changes to the script. Now, we will open the animator window as I forgot to do something. We will click the transition that we've just created a few moments ago. Now, we will add a condition. The condition automatically took the jump parameter. But, we will change that to death. Then we will also disable the has exit time, as we want the animation to be played immediately without taking extra time. So, now we can hit play. First, we will try to fall down from the ground. Ok the game is over as we can see. Now, we will restart the game. This time we will collide with an obstacle. Ok, this also works. So, this is it for this video, and I will see you in the next video.